Hello, everyone, and congratulations on becoming a UIW Cardinal. My name is Dion Bedell. I'm the Student Success Coordinator for the University of the Incarnate Word Division of Extended Academic Programs. Today, I'm honored to have here with me Valerie Vargas, who is an academic advisor for the Extended Academic Programs. Valerie, thank you so much for joining me here today. We are thrilled that you have chosen to pursue, uh, pursue a UIW degree with us. And so we want to help you have the very best start um, that you can have at UIW. Within this hour, we will share 10 steps to academic success. We believe that taking these steps will put you on the pathway to success. So, are you ready? Let's begin. Step number one, discover you. Well, what does that mean? Discovering who you are um, means discover who you are as a student. Discover the things that you need to be successful. That means investigating your options. What degree program is best for you? Well, if you want to know what's, uh, what degree programs work the best, we, we advise that you go to um, either the School of Professional Studies, if you're part of that school, or the School of uh, Applied Sciences. Go to Academics. And there, if you click on any undergraduate or graduate degree, you will see um, you will see a window that says, "What can I do with this degree?" Um, if you take a look at the slide on the right hand side, there is a picture. What can I do with this degree? If you click on that, it will show you different ways you can use that degree. See if that is the best fit for you. Is this what you want to do with your life? Is this the type of study that you really want to pursue. It's okay to change your mind. And the advisors are there to help you uh, work through it, give you resources, um, things to research on your own. Find out what matches you. Find out what matches the goals that you have for yourself. Second, what learning format is best? Do you do well on the online platform? Do you need that type of flexibility? Do you work better in the classroom? Do you get more from the instructor and, and, and uh, being around classmates that you can talk to and conversate with in person? Or do you need a mix? Do you need a hybrid um, type of course? Um, I do want to mention here online, and Valerie, you can chime in with, with me in regards to online. Online usually has um, an interesting view uh, for the student. Online is not easy. Online is convenient, yes. It is available 24 hours a day. Yes. Is it easy? It is not. Um, it, it, online is designed for the student who is a little more disciplined, who doesn't require someone reminding them of what needs to be done. Um, it works well if you are logging in four to five times a week on the class. If you're spending about an hour to two hours a night or a day with whenever, whatever time you log in on your required coursework. Um, the online format is wonderful because it, it gives you that flexibility to log in. You don't have to log in at specific times as long as you meet the deadlines um, notated by your instructor on your syllabus. But the online program, I have to say, is a little bit more rigorous than in-person only because when you're in-person classes, um, you are participating. That's your participation actually showing up to class. When you're on online, the way we um, determine whether or not you're engaged and actually participating is if you're logged in and communicating with one another and the instructor. So it does require a little more time to be dedicated to those online classes. Absolutely. These are things that you want to investigate. Um, you want to make sure that the environment that you choose, the learning format that you choose, is right for you. Um, lastly, are money and our financial aid available for you? Um, there are some of you that may have um, assistance from your employers. There may be some that 
are, are only going the financial aid route, uh, what is available to you? One of the things that we wanted to let you know about is that there is an EAP scholarship. Did you want to spend some time talking about that? Sure. The EAP scholarship is actually monies raised by one another. Um, the students themselves. So we hold different types of events, student appreciations throughout the year, and um, anything raised during those events is put towards our EAP scholarship. Also, when we do an employee campaign um, to raise money within the university, typically our employees will select to have their donations placed in an EAP scholarship fund. So this scholarship um, allows the student to use it towards tuition costs. Um, it's not something you have to qualify for. Um, it, it's not according to GPA or how many activities you're involved in or what your resume says. The EAP scholarship is actually available to everybody who registers early. So your name goes into a hat, so to speak, and all of those that register early, we pull a name from that pool and um, you're awarded the scholarship. So um, I was blessed to have two of my students these last two terms um, nominated or chosen to receive the EAP scholarship and it was a real, real blessing for them. So um, I believe it is $800 is what they receive in, um, in assistance and like I said, it does go towards your um, tuition costs. That's wonderful information. Um, thank you so much. Step number two, prepare. Prepare and prepare some more. Your goal is to graduate. Is that a smart goal? The answer is no, but not yet. A smart goal is one that is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So just saying that you want to graduate is not enough. It doesn't make it smart. So let us revisit this goal and make it a smart one. Your new goal, for example, is to graduate with a Bachelor of Arts in Human Resources by the spring of 2021. Well, if you take a look at that goal, now it's much more specific. It's measurable. It is attainable. You're giving yourself roughly four years to finish an undergraduate degree. Now, that's if you have never attended college, okay? If you have attended some college or have some credits that transfer, of course that would change for you. But now it's attainable, it's relevant, and it's bound by time. So you have something to work towards. Well, why is that important? Because once you have a SMART goal, you are now ready to make a plan. I call it action planning because reaching your goal requires action on your part. It's like developing a roadmap for yourself. If your goal is to graduate by, tw uh, by 2021, what are the steps that you must take to achieve this goal? That's a really, really important part of preparation. Schedule and organize your life. Valerie, would you like to go into detail about this one? Sure. So one of the most important things about scheduling is determining what is happening personally with you and professionally. So you want to make sure that you, you do have um, time-bound goals, but that they are relevant to your situation. One of the most important things is to understand that the courses are eight weeks. So you are not, um, we are not um, taking anything away from a course. So you are doing 16 weeks of material of work in an eight week period. So it is going to be a bit um, uh, rigorous. The only difference is that you can choose whether you want to pursue two classes every eight weeks or one class every eight weeks. Think about your life. Think about what's going on in your personal life. Are you running crazy with kids? Um, do you have very active children? Do you have small children? Um, do you have a lot going on at work? Um, for instance, are you involved in different projects? So you want to think about all of those things before you determine how many classes you want to register for. It's really easy to get excited and say, I want to finish as soon as possible, so I'm going to register for two classes every eight weeks but then you realize you have overextended yourself. And in order to be successful, you want to register for what you can handle. So get with your advisor as well as with your family, all those involved in you going back to school to see what's going to fit best in your life at that, at that time. Um, another thing is you want to make sure that you are scheduling um, 
if you're doing online classes, for example, it, I know it, it, I talked about it being a little bit more involved, um, a little bit more disciplined. One of the things I recommend students do is when you decide to do an online class, act like you're going into an on-ground class. Act like you're going in the classroom. Let your family know, hey, I'm going to be in class between this time and this time every evening. When you see me working, don't disturb me. Um, this helps you and it, it helps you get organized and um, it also makes it to where you know you're going to be successful in the course. Absolutely. Wonderful advice. Wonderful advice. This is really, really important. You must prepare for the journey ahead. Step number three, seek guidance. Um, you want to make sure that you meet with your advisor. Um, of course, the minimum at this point, you want to meet once every trimester, but you need to meet with your advisor whenever questions arise um, that are, are, are not just common knowledge. They are there to help you. So make sure that you meet with your advisor regularly. Vary your classes, and of course, ask for help. Uh, Valerie, do you want to go a little bit more into this one as well? Absolutely. So meet with your advisor. Every eight weeks you're registering for classes. Um, we recommend that you get with your advisor. And it's not necessarily because we feel like you can't do this on your own. We actually want you to do it um, on your own in a, in a sense that you take responsibility and ownership for your degree. So you'll have a degree plan to follow. You'll see the class schedules. What we recommend is that you look to see what you still need, what's required on your program and what you'd like to register for, what's being offered, submit that to your academic advisor. You can do it via email, you can a phone call and just say, these are the classes I would like to register for. Do you feel like there would be an issue with these? Let your advisor um, guide you and tell you, you know, those two classes are wonderful together or don't take those two classes together if you want to have hair at the end of the eight weeks, just things like that. So, um, you know, we we try to talk with you about your strong points. Um, do you do well in math? Do you do well in writing? If you do well in math, then, then it may not be an issue for you to take both um, an accounting class and an algebra class together. If it's, a, it's not your strongest point, then we recommend you take one um, course that, that is something that you're strong in and another course that you're a little weaker in to balance it out. Um, but definitely don't feel like you can't go to your advisor for assistance or guidance and don't feel like um, this question is silly or it doesn't make any sense or I should know this. This is not something you're used to doing. This is something new to you coming back to school after years of being out or coming back to school for the first time. So it may be common knowledge for us as the advisor, but it's not for you. So ask your question, get guidance. It's better to ask before um, than when you're drowning and you really need some assistance. So question, mm -hmm. what are the ways that a student can connect with an advisor? So we have different ways. Since our advisors deal with both online students, in-classroom students, um, some of our students are all over the country and all over the world, we are able to connect with you via email, um, a voicemail, of course, you know, telephone, or we can even use um, our video conferencing. So say you are on your lunch break and you can't get to a center to meet with an academic advisor, we can definitely schedule something to meet with you um, electronically. Uh, if you call in an academic advisor and you don't get a response um, over the telephone, sometimes um, we're meeting with students in the office and it's difficult for us to answer the phone, but follow up with an email and we will definitely get back with you. But we do have options for you so that you're not having to take off of work, you're not having to disrupt your schedule, you can get with an academic advisor for assistance. Absolutely. Um, it is important to vary your classes. So Valerie, what do your advisors recommend students consider when registering, uh, registering for courses? So registering for courses, you definitely want to vary your classes. We schedule um, our classes in a specific way. For example, we offer classes, we offer the schedule in the, with the understanding that our students will register for one class in the core curriculum and one class in the major. We don't ever um, recommend a student concentrate in just one area. Don't just concentrate in the core curriculum, don't just concentrate in the major. What will happen is eventually you'll get to a point where all you're going to need are classes in one of those sections and you may end up finding yourself sitting out a term because you didn't vary your classes. 
Um, typically when I see a registration come through for a student, I'll make sure that it matches up with their degree plan one, but also are they concentrating in one area? I, I'll, I'll make a recommendation. I recommend you register for one um, in your core that you still need and then do one in the major. That's if you're doing two classes every eight weeks. If you're just doing one class every eight weeks, I still advise you to vary. So for the first eight weeks, schedule something from the core curriculum. The second eight weeks, do something in your major. Go back and forth. It, it helps um, it helps balance out your classes, helps get you acclimated into the program, but it also helps you um, so that you, you're always having a class that you can take each term. Um, another, another thing to consider is that when you register for classes, uh, you want to make sure that um, varying, you don't end up taking two classes. Like I said previously, they are very difficult. Um, sometimes if you concentrate just on one section, you're going to end up with two very difficult classes, um, in, and it's going to be overwhelming for you. Absolutely. Uh, one of the examples I thought of as you were speaking is if you know that you, that math is not your strong suit, um, you know that you're going to really need to focus on a math course, well, you don't want to take that and accounting, something that's also math-based. Yes. Um, you're kind of setting yourself up for a rough road. Not that you cannot do it, but you want to think, you want to think about your strong suit. If you're doing math, but you're great at writing, then couple that that course of uh, that math course with a writing course. You know that you don't have to give this. Uh, you know that you will need to to give a lot more time to the math um, than the writing. So it balances out. It balances out your time. So make sure that you keep that in mind as you're thinking about the classes that you want to register for. But even if it comes up where just just like Valerie said, um, if they notice that you might want to bury your classes, they're going to reach out to you. You're not in this by yourself. Which leads me to the last point. Mm -hmm. Ask for help. Yes. Whether you are a brand new student coming in and just starting collegiate studies or you're a transfer student coming in, you do not have to do this alone. We are here to help. Um, there's a proverb in the Bible that I'm just going to paraphrase, and it says, pride cometh before a fall. So please do not let your pride or the fact that you have always been in the know of something but now you don't know keep you from reaching out. Reach out to the advisors, reach out to our staff, reach out to your instructor and ask questions. There is no such thing um, as a dumb question or one that doesn't make sense. If, if, if it is something that you need to know, ask. Do not hesitate to ask questions. We are all here to help you succeed. Um, I'll give you an example of ask for help um, before the problem occurs. So recently I had a student who contacted me wanting to drop a class because of health reasons. The problem was she had um, simply stopped uh, participating in her online course and did not reach out to the instructor and let them know that she was struggling or that um, she was having issues. I ask that you communicate as soon as you realize there's a problem because the deadline had passed to drop the course. So she was going to have to earn, um, accept the grade that she's earned at that point. If she had come to um, us sooner, we would have been able to assist her with um, getting out of the class without it affecting her GPA. So I ask that you seek help as soon as you realize there's an issue. Let's get you help. We can always work together to solve this, the problem. Absolutely. Step number four, refresh. Refresh your skills in the subject areas where you need a little help, such as math, reading, and writing studying, test taking, time management, and technology. It is so important. One of the things that Valerie previously mentioned was the condensed format. You were doing 16 weeks of work and only eight. So if you are not strong in math, you need to start refreshing right now. You, the instructor will not have the time to go over basic math skills in an eight-week format. You have to brush up on the things that you know you're going to need a little help on. There are tons of free resources available online um, via the, the web. You have uh, sites like Khan Academy, even YouTube videos. 
There is so much available to you now. Don't wait until you get into the class. Start right now. Start reading those books um, that are more of a collegiate feel um, than a leisure feel. Um, start, start writing again. Texting and emailing is totally different from academic writing. Start getting your mind, um, um, start getting your mind refreshed in academic writing, the essays and how to put together um, a paper, a research paper, how to cite properly, MLA, APA writing style. There are so many tutorials available for you and you can do that right now. Were you not a big studier in high school, but you know you're going to need it here? Find out what you need to do to become a better and a studious student. Um, look at ways to be a better test taker. Learn how to manage your time. Do you not know how to use Microsoft Office? Again, there are tons of online resources that can help you refresh in the areas that you'll need help in. Step number five, be strong in the classroom. Connect with your instructor. This is number one because it is so important that you connect with your instructor. Whether you are online or in person, this is a huge step. You want to make contact immediately with your instructor. If you have questions about their format, if you have questions about the syllabus, let them know early on. Don't be in the midst of an assignment you know, and it's an hour before it's due, and then you want to connect. Start right away. Start right away. Stay behind after class has been dismissed. Ask questions. Get to know who they are as a person. Or come early. Let them, let them know that you're interested in knowing about their background or that you would like to receive some career advice. Connect in any way you can with the instructor. They are there to help you and guide you. Um, not only in the course content, but also in developing your career, whatever that may be. Also connect with your classmates. You can do this again, whether you are in the online format or in person. Um, there are chat features within Blackboard. There's the discussion threads. Um, you can set up study groups um, with, the, with the people that are online and in the class. Get to know them. Network. A lot, of, a lot of the students that you will be in class with are professionals in the fields that you may even want to be in. So connect with them on different levels. Um, it's very important to keep up with the assignments. Day one of, of your course, you will have access to the syllabus and course outline. This is going to be so important for you because you will know exactly what the expectations are for the eight-week course. Make sure that you keep up. If you have questions, um, make sure that you ask them right away so that you're clear about what your, your task is. Um, I've said ask questions probably about five times during this slide. <laughs> but, but ask questions. If you hear nothing else, I say ask questions. Get the answers that you need and don't just assume. Uh, no. Lastly, have fun. This is your journey. Get the most out of the classroom. You are investing in yourself, but make it a fun, a, a fun investment. Make it a fun experience. It is whatever you put into it. And so if you want this to be a fun journey, one that is challenging, but you make um, a lot of lifelong connections, be committed to having some fun along the way. Step number six. Be early. And when I say be early, I mean do everything early. Wake up early, go to sleep early, register early, read the syllabus and course line early, access the ebook early, ask questions early. See, I told you I would keep saying this all throughout the presentation. Finish homework early, do everything early. And why is that? Because life happens. You have to leave room for the unexpected. Life is full of uncertainties, twists, and turns. If you are proactive in making sure that you stay on top of things, you will leave room for the unexpected. Is there anything that you wanted to add there? With registration, it is extremely important. Everything on this slide is very important. Registration um, for our terms open together. For example, fall one and fall two are currently open together. 
we recommend that you do not wait to register for the second term once the ter first term has already begun. You want to register for them as early as possible, as soon as you can access them. The reason being is that classes tend to fill up really quickly, and even more so online, um, because there's a greater population of students taking online classes. You don't want to be left out in the cold. You don't want those classes that you need um, or that you'd like to take unavailable to you because you waited to register. It's one of the most important things. Um, we tend to also have sometimes um, classes that a lot of students would like to take and then end up not registering for them till it's too late and the course has been canceled. So we want to make sure that you utilize um, the fact that both registrations are for both terms are open early. Get registered, and then like I said earlier, you can also um, register in early. You can also uh, be placed into that hat to, um, to ultimately win one of the scholarships uh, for your tuition. One of the other things that um, is really important is that ebook or the book itself. Um, in Blackboard, you'll see a, a tab that states um, course syllabus and textbook information. If you are not accessing that ebook until after classes begin and you begin to have technical problems, because we are an eight-week format, you'll tend to have assignments due um, within that first week. So the first day of class, you'll know what assignments um, you'll need and the reading that is required. So, so you don't fall behind. We ask that you access that book as soon as possible. If it is a hardbound book, we ask that you access the information as soon as possible so that you can get the book in your hands and are actually able to do the assignments. It's, it's always difficult to start off um, late and to catch up in an eight-week format. Um, so once you fall behind, it's so difficult to catch up. We want you to access everything as early as possible to ensure your success. Absolutely. And before we move on, while we were talking about early, I thought about a question that we may need to clear up too. Those that are registered for Saturday classes, yes. what do they need to know? So the Saturday classes actually begin before the rest of the uh, classes begin during the week. So typically, um, classes begin that, I'll give an example, um, our class term for Saturday classes begin August 19th for fall one, but the actual term for weekday classes doesn't begin until the 21st. So you want to make sure you don't miss the first day of class. And it's a really important, um, Saturday classes are blended. They're um, what we refer to as hybrid in this presentation. Blended courses are a part in online and part in the classroom. Um, because you only meet one day a week, you, if you miss a class or if you miss an assignment, it's, it's like missing an equivalency to one week of work, and it's difficult to catch up. So we want to make sure we do have other classes that meet one day a week during the week. It's the same concept. If you miss the class or miss the assignment, you're, you've already put yourself a week behind. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really important to stay on top of everything. And we give you the tools. We give you the information to do so. So again, leave room for the unexpected. Step number seven. Be consistent. Consistency is crucial to success. If you see any machine that, that operates consistently, you will see progress. Um, but guess what? A lack of consistency, it leads to what? It, it can lead to failure. So we, we really, really want you to uh, commit to being consistent in everything that you do. So establish a routine and stick to it. Schedule time every day for school. Again, this is an investment in you, and this is a condensed format. You will be surprised how quickly those eight weeks go by. Absolutely. And so you want to stay on top of your reading, research. If you have a research paper, that does not happen overnight. You have to do a little bit at a time not to get overwhelmed and to make sure that your papers are organized in a proper way. Um, taking time to really go through the assignments, reading the instructions. I can't tell you how many students make lower grades just because they did not read the instructions for the assignments like they should have. Why? Because they were rushing through it. You have to schedule time every day for school. And another tip is to study in the same place. 
make sure it's very comfortable, not too comfortable where you'll go to sleep, but make sure it's comfortable and well lit. Um, this will also serve as a physical reminder for you and others that it is your study time. It is the time that you are invested in you and making sure that your coursework is done in a timely manner. Um, you want to talk about um, your safe space. Valerie is not <laughs> only an advisor, but she's also a student. And so talk about your study area. So um, it's taken me a while because life happened. So I had children in the process of trying to finish my master's, and now that um, I'm Close to finishing, I've learned quite a few things. One of the most important things I have to say is study in the same place. So I have four children and a husband who works full time as well. So when they see me at a certain time in the living room, on my little over the bed table, they know that this is my space and they're not to disturb mommy, even my husband. Um, so I want to, I always make sure that I'm in the same place. They, when they see my laptop open, they know I'm working. Or when they see me sitting in that chair, they know I'm working. Um, the best thing to do uh, is, is to make sure it's comfortable, but like Dion said, not too comfortable. I made the mistake about a year ago um, of studying always on my bed. <laughs> and so my husband would come in and find me asleep on my laptop a lot. Um, it didn't help that I was pregnant either at that time, but it's not a good idea to make it too comfortable. So um, it is a good idea to have the study time in the same place, but also at the same time. So I know things happen in life. I understand that with a family. Um, it's hard sometimes to do things uh, all the time at the same time. But if you try your hardest to stick to the, the routine of at this time, this is what happens. It's not the same for everybody. In my household, um, my children are in bed at 8.30. My husband works late, so he comes in about 9.30, 10 o'clock. It's later during peak times. Um, during the Christmas holidays, so I um, I make sure that my time is after everyone's gone to bed. And sometimes that happens um, when you have a family. You have to do it once your obligations with your family have stopped for that evening. Um, but make sure it's it's consistent for you. Um, you only you know what happens in your household or what you can um, accomplish. And so make sure that you try your hardest to stick to an established routine. Absolutely. Step number eight, embrace change. Change requires a shift in priorities. Adding school to the mix of your life is a very significant change. Um, we recommend that for every class that you enroll, that you plan to spend at least 10 to 12 hours per week. That's including the, the class time um, or, or your study time. Um, you spend that per week for each course. Well, that sounds like a lot. You, you spread it over seven days, um, not so much. But, of course, this will vary based on the requirements of the course or the intensity or, or a whole list of other things that would be in the mix. However, um, that is a significant change. That is a significant time commitment that you must give. But remember this, each of us has the same 24 hours to use. So we need to use them wisely. We need to schedule them wisely. So this may require the use of phrases like, no, not yet. And that will have to wait until a later time to our family and our friends. Now, that can be difficult sometimes. Um, and so it requires balance as well. And we'll talk about that a little later in this presentation but you may have to use those and name them. Um, again, you're dealing with the eight-week format, and so if something is just not that important, you know, it can wait, you know, to a later time until you have done the things that you need to do for that course, they may have to just wait. And it requires a short-term trade-off with your time. This is not going to take forever. This, this, is a, this, is a, this is a small investment that is going to give you great reward. And so think about it that way. As you're going through the classes, what are the short-term trade-offs you can give? Because you will get that time back, and then you'll have to change again. Um, you'll have to readjust your life because you will have had your graduation. Yay. Uh, you will graduate. You'll have this under your belt, and then you'll have a whole other journey to take. And so... Remember, 
Yes, this is a change. Embrace it. Adjust as needed. Step number nine. Be empowered. That is what we want to do here. Um, that is the purpose of this webinar. We want to empower you, the student, to get in the driver's seat and make it to your destination and make it there successfully. So we have resources that are available um, to you. This educational journey is yours. Um, so let's talk about some of the student services available. Uh, Valerie, would you like to go through these? Sure. So the business office um, is available to students. This is where you're going to submit if you're using um, tuition assistance. You're going to submit those forms directly to the business office. Um, if you're wanting to make payment arrangements, which we recommend that you contact the business office right away, set those up, you'll contact the business office. The Office of Financial Aid is available. They do both electronic and in-person visits. Um, you can contact them, leave a message, send an email, they'll respond back to you. The first thing they're going to recommend is that you complete a FAFSA online, the application for financial assistance. Um, they're a wonderful resource. Career and Development is an awesome program that we have here at UIW, and they will actually assist you with resume writing, um, looking for job placement, um, and I don't mean that they'll place you in a job, I just mean that they have um, availability of lists that employers contact them and, and ask them, you know, do you have anybody in this field or, or that's graduating soon? So they always have a list, sometimes they have job fairs open um, for our students to attend. We have counseling services that are available um, on main campus. If you're interested in needing those, we ask that you reach out to them. The Maybe Library is probably one of the greatest resources you will have with UIW. You can access it electronically, remotely. Um, we have tons of resources available. When you're in um, undergraduate program and graduate program, you will utilize the research um, component of the library. We have all types of electronic um, journals, uh, scholarly journals, um, different articles, of course the textbooks themselves we have where you can check out a book and you can borrow it from other libraries as well. So we have an interchangeable um, program there, an exchange program. Um, the UIW Help Desk is also very important as they are the department that will um, reset your password for Blackboard, your MyWord portal, and for your email. So if you need them, they're available and they are available 24-7. Um, the Online Writing Center is a wonderful resource for our students, both online students and in the classroom. What you'll do is you'll submit your paper that you've worked on and they will give you tips. They won't write the paper for you, but they will give you tips on how to improve, what they recommend. So it's kind of like having a set of, uh, uh, a new set of eyes to look at it, but someone who, um, that's their strong suit, is writing. So they're there to assist you. For those students who need it, the Veterans Affairs Office is available. Um, they work with our students who are using, um, post 9-11, uh, Vogue Rehab, things of that nature. Um, they, all of the, this information is also available on our website um, for you as well. And then we have the military um, for service members, the tutor.com, which is an awesome research, uh, resource for our students as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, we want you to use these resources. At the end of this presentation, we'll actually have the link to, student re to the student resources uh, website. Um, so you can take a look at all of the resources available to you. These are just the student services, but we have many more research, uh, resources listed for you. Step number 10, enjoy the journey. Again, this is, this is your journey. Um, it, is, it is important that you make the choice to become an active learner. Um, just attending class is not enough. You have to get the most out of every course. You have to be engaged. Um, it's not just about doing assignments. You want to leave each class with more knowledge than what you started. Um, and so your input, your experience is very, very important. Um, your, your instructors are going to want that. Um, anything that you can relate to your job, your current job or uh, your future career, um, don't be afraid to 
don't be afraid to discuss those things in class. Don't be afraid to ask questions. It's really, really important. And it's, part, it's a very important part of your educational journey. Um, don't forget to revel in your accomplishments. Every, every accomplishment deserves your attention. Don't, don't uh, minimize anything that you do well. Did you ace that test that you thought you totally tanked? Give yourself a pat on the back. You, you have, again, you have already made the choice um, to pursue an education through UIW. You need, you need to give yourself a high five. You have made a great choice. You have chosen to invest in your life, in your career. And so that is something that you need to celebrate. So acknowledge all of your successes, not just the big things, but also the small things. Create margin in your life. Well, what does that mean? That means that you, you need to work hard, you need to work smart, but don't forget to sprinkle a little bit of play into your life. It's about balance. So, uh, Valerie, would you talk about margin just a little bit? Um, one of the most important things to understand is that we know where you're coming from. People in this program, the, your fellow students, are in the same situation. Many of them are working adults, they have families, they have obligations. So we want you to utilize us as your uh, academic advisor and get you in the classes that will work for you, that are a good balance, That because when you do that, you're working smarter, not harder. And we definitely need you to continue with your personal life. Um, I was reminded that there are some things you're just going to have to say can wait and enjoy some time. Um, I know that with um, coming back to school, sacrifices have to be made. Um, I, there have been many nights where my kids are picking their clothes out of the laundry basket because I've washed them and threw them in there, and I don't have time to fold them at that moment. I have homework to do. But instead of saying, I'm going to fold it when I'm done, I say, I'm going to go and enjoy my kids when I'm done with my homework. And so you kind of have to give be able to have that give and take with yourself. Um, don't beat yourself up about the dishes not being done or, you know, um, if you're cutting the grass, things like that, let it go and, and enjoy some of the time with your family or with your life. If you like doing certain things and you're done with your homework, go do those things. Um, and it helps make a balance so that you're not so overwhelmed and you don't get burned out in the middle of your program. Lastly, adjust as needed, but do not Quits. Don't even let that be an option for you. If you need to lessen your course load or make adjustments, do it. Do it. Make those adjustments, but don't quit. Communicate with your instructor or your advisor about your needs, about your situations. Let us help you the best that we can to keep you going. This is a journey, and you're going to have some ups and downs, but as long as you stay committed to moving forward, whether that is a baby step or a big step, it doesn't matter. It's still a step in the right direction. You will reach your final destination. Graduation is closer than you think. You just have to decide to continue to move forward. You can do it. Um, and, and this is what I know. Balance is key. Balance is key. Um, we know that your life is, is, is full of responsibilities. You are a working adult. Otherwise, you wouldn't be a part of the extended academic programs. So we know that you are, you are going to be dealing with school. You're going to deal with family. You deal with finances. You have a career or you are, you're pursuing a career, but you are working um, in the midst of all of this. We know that you have all of these things going on. It's called life. <laughs> it's called life. But balance is the key. You've got to find your balance. You've got to find your balance. Um, we can help you the best way we can, um, but you have to communicate with us. We can help you. We can, we can connect you to resources that will make this journey the best it can absolutely be. Um, is there anything that you wanted to add in regards to balance, Valerie? Um, the, one of the most important things is just to ensure that um, you understand when you have to cut back on a class, it's not a failure. It's, it's simply making room for life. And if it means um, your daughter or son wants to get involved in something and you really can't commit to two classes, I am the first one to tell you your family comes first. So you're doing this education for your family or for yourself if you don't have a family. You're, ultimately, your education is for you. 
So it is your personal journey, but you definitely have to have a balance. Um, I'm, and you'll learn a lot of this as well in your classes. They speak a lot about the work-life balance and how important it is. Well, this is work-life and school balance. So we want you to um, try to make it as less stressful as possible on yourself. Absolutely. So this is what we know about you. You can do it. You can do it. You have made the choice. You have, you have taken a giant leap um, into your future. You can do this. Let us help you. Um, the 10 steps presented here today can help you reach your destination. So be committed. Do not stop. Um, if, if you could finish earlier, you could finish later. The, the key word is finish. You have to finish. Stopping is not an option. Um, we have reached the end of this session. I hope that you have found this information very helpful to you. Um, for more information about our student resources, we definitely want you to visit our student web uh, resources site. Um, for more information, there are links there that will take you to the information um, that you need to find. There are frequently asked questions um, on that page. So a lot of things that we may not have addressed here will probably be answered in the frequently asked questions, okay? Um, we do see that we have um, a question, so we wanted to take a moment um, to address those. So this question is, um, 100% online classes are only offered on Saturday, beginning on August 19th. No. So online classes begin on Monday, the 21st of August for Fall 1. Those classes are seven days a week um, for eight weeks. So you um, will be logging in as needed to meet the requirements of the syllabus and the course outline. Saturday classes, um, those are in-ground classes that are considered hybrid or half online, half in the classroom. So you attend in person for one day. And those classes are held at the Northwest Center in San Antonio over um, at I-10 and Wurzbach. Those are the only classes that are hybrid classes. The online classes are 100% online. I hope that answered your question. Well, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any other questions, please let us know. You can reach us through the website. Um, you can reach out to your advisor um, on the student resources page. If you're not sure who your advisor is, there is information on how to find your advisor. There are also student forms available, the commonly used. Um, you'll find student success tips and more. It looks like we have one more question. So um, you're asking, what about the 45 hours of community service and book vouchers? The really awesome part about um, the uh, community service is that we will take 45 hours of community service for your undergrad degree for any nonprofit from any nonprofit organization that you've uh, volunteered at in the last five years of your admission. So say you did it five years ago, you were very involved um, with the food bank or with um, a, um, a veterinary, um, you know, uh, shelter, things like that, animal shelter. You can use all of that. If you're concerned about um, what may qualify as community service, you can go to our website and um, look up uh, mission and ministry. The community service requirements are on there, but you can also verify with um, the person who handles that if it's one uh, agency that is acceptable. The book vouchers, you will access those in Blackboard. So they Fall 1 classes are listed right now. If you are registered for Fall 1 classes, you can go to your Blackboard account and you will see the book vouchers on there. Um, you will, if it's a book voucher for a hardbound book, you will download it. Um, you will print it out. You can take it to the UIW bookstore if you're local with an ID and you will get your textbook there. If it um, is an ebook, we you'll have instructions on how to download it. And if you're an undergrad student, it's it's um, at our cost, not yours. Um, if you're out of town and you need a book voucher, you can um, contact the bookstore. The instructions are all in your Blackboard classroom. Uh, the other question is, is this video available to watch again? Absolutely. It will be available to you. Uh, please stay tuned and, and check out the student resources website again. Um, we will be adding this presentation um, 
to that site so you can watch it again. But also know that if you are a new student entering in fall one, your undergrad, your undergrad student, brand new, you will be enrolled in a new student orientation. A lot of this information will be presented again to you. Um, so that resource is going to be available to you. We do realize that we have we have given you quite a bit of information today. So we are definitely not going to leave you empty handed. We will make sure that you will have these resources available to you at your at, at the time that you need it. Any other questions? Looks like we have one. Okay. So um, they're asking about IDs. Students who are going to classes in the classroom will need IDs for three centers that are secured. The Sadoff Center at Tesla and Gilbo, the Northwest Center at I-10 Wurzbach, um, and the um, Fike School of Pharmacy, which is Alamo Heights graduate classes are held there. Um, you will automatically receive an ID if you are going to be taking graduate classes at the Alamo Heights Center, the Fike School of Pharmacy. The other two centers, you will need to request an ID from your academic advisor. Once you request the ID, it will be ordered and it will, you will be contacted as to when it's in and where you can pick it up. Typically, we'll allow you to pick it up at the center you're taking classes at. Just be prepared that if you are taking classes at the Northwest Center or, or at the Sadoff Center, you'll be asked to show um, a picture ID until your school ID comes in. Um, the school ID does not have a picture on it, so if, you, if, if you're using it somewhere that requires a discount, you may, have, um, you may be asked to use a picture ID along with the student ID. Any other questions? We do have a few more minutes. If not, we thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we hope we answered a lot of your questions. We hope that we have motivated you to just go in there and do your very best in all your classes. We are so ready to see you walk across the stage and receive your diploma. Um, and so thank you so much for giving us this time to share with you 10 tips to academic success. Thank you so much.